If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial, and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. My name is Rob Gorski, and you're listening to the Autism Dad Podcast. I want to thank you for taking the time to tune in again this week. I really appreciate it. I know that there's a lot going on with this COVID-19 crisis. I hope that as you're listening, that you and everyone in your world is safe and healthy. Um, I I know this is difficult. As I'm recording this, uh, we're on day 70 of of total lockdown, and uh, it's not easy. Like at all, I get it, and uh, we'll get through this. So I just want uh, I want you guys to know that I'm, th- I'm thinking about you and I, and I and I wish you the best. So so stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we're going to move on to a couple of housekeeping things before we move on to the show. Um, this will probably be the last episode for a couple of weeks. This is episode 21 of season three, and it's a lot of work to to put all these together, and it's become very difficult to do with my kids home 24 uh, seven. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break for a couple of weeks and just kind of regroup. Um, it, it's kind of stressful for me to try and get all this stuff done and um, I need to take care of myself. So I'm just going to take a little vacation from this. Uh, I'll record some interviews and stuff like that between now and then. Uh, but I'm just going to not worry about deadlines or uh, or release dates or anything like that for right now. So probably be a couple of weeks, probably get back in June. So, uh, you know, that would be a great time to get caught up on all the previous episodes. There's 40 or 50 of them, I think. Um, so check those out. I'll have a link in the description where you can, where you can see everything in one place. So that's that. As for our show today, um, I am thrilled to have uh, a very special guest today. Her name is Kristen Canavera. She is a psychologist with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And, uh, St. Jude has, has put together this amazing, well, these amazing kits, uh, to help parents talk to their kids about COVID-19. There's, they're broken up into kind of different groups for different age groups. And, and they have found a very developmentally appropriate way to help kids navigate the COVID-19 crisis. So it educates them. It helps to kind of take some of the fear out of it uh, by giving them the facts. And, you know, it's broken down by age groups. So it's a fantastic thing. I've, I've downloaded it. I've used it on, uh, used it with my kids. And, you know, there's some fun games and word searches and, and a lot of educational stuff. It's all free. All the links will be in the description below, so so I'll make sure that you guys have access to that. And uh, Kristen and I will have a wonderful conversation uh, right after this quick commercial break, so please stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back, and as I said previously, uh, Kristen is here from St. Jude Children's Research Hospital uh, to talk to us about uh, COVID-19 and this resource kit that they put together for children and families to help to help parents like myself better explain this 
to my kids in a way that is less threatening, I guess. Um, and so, uh, Kristen, thank you for taking the time. I know you guys are really, really busy. Uh, I appreciate everything that you guys do at, at St. Jude. Um, my oldest has fragile health and while we've not had to, uh, we've, we've not been to St. Jude. Um, I do very much appreciate all of the research and the work that you guys are doing for kids like mine. So I, I really do appreciate it. It's, it's an honor to have you guys on the show. Um, so thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Uh, would you, could you take a, a couple of minutes and just kind of tell us about your background? Like, what do you do at the hospital? So I'm a pediatric psychologist and I've been at St. Jude um, several years now. I do primarily clinical work and some research, but my clinical work involves working with patients and their families on helping them cope with a cancer diagnosis, helping them adjust to those changes when they have to go through treatments, um, and just really helping them during a stressful time. Um, I work most closely with our leukemia and our ICU teams. Um, before St. Jude, my background, I specialized in childhood anxiety disorders and OCD. Um, and I have some experience working with kids with autism spectrum disorders. Um, I was very fortunate I got some training as a LEND fellow in my um, prior training before St. Jude. So that's a program. It's a leadership education and neurodevelopmental disabilities program. Very cool. Um, for those of you out there who may not be aware of, of what St. Jude is and, and what they do, could you kind of explain in a nutshell what it's hard to do with St. Jude, but like what you guys do? Yeah. So we are a children's hospital specifically focused on treating childhood cancer and other catastrophic illnesses. We also treat, um, blood disorders like sickle cell disease, and we have a big focus on research at St. Jude as well. Um, so for those who don't know, we're based out of Memphis, Tennessee, but we do have several affiliate clinics in other states as well. Oh, I didn't know that. One of the things that you guys are doing at St. Jude in response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is is trying to put out resources that helps parents, families, and, and children. Um, what kind of impact has, has COVID-19 had on, on families? Like, what are you, um, what are you seeing as, as the impact? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, well, a huge impact, obviously, I think right now there's high levels of uncertainty for everybody. Um, not just St. Jude patients, but the whole community, it's everybody's anxious. Everybody's worried. Everybody's trying to deal with this uncertainty. Um, so we are seeing changes, big changes in family routines. So suddenly mom and dad are working from home and suddenly kids don't have to go to school and their siblings are at home and they're home together 24 seven. Um, and this has been challenging for everybody. I think, especially parents, it's been a big stressor for parents. They're now having to juggle both working a full-time job and homeschooling. And our teenagers are also struggling. This is a time when they're normally becoming independent and socializing and going and hanging out with their friends. And now all of a sudden they're cooped up at home and with their parents 24 um, seven. I think those are just some of the examples. I think there's a lot of, a lot of high emotion, a lot of variability though, too. So when you guys put this, this resource kit together, what was the, what was the reason behind it? Why did you guys, um, decide to, and, and it looks like you put a lot of work into this. Um, what was sort of the driving force behind that? Well, I think we, you know, initially, um, the idea came early March, um, and we really wanted some clear developmentally appropriate educational tools for our patients. Um, so we were initially inspired by our patients to get some information to them to help them understand COVID. But we also wrote them in a way so that they could be used broadly by anybody in the community, not just our patients. So it really was meant to help them better understand COVID, to help them understand these sudden changes that we're all experiencing and having to deal with, and really to give them a, a tool to, to work through worries and anxieties that they may have about COVID. Okay. So, so I, I was looking over this, I have it down there. It's just out of reach now. 
Um, you guys had, uh, it, it's put together in a way that, and I think there's, there's two kits, right? There's, there's one for kids and one for, uh, parents. So we have, uh, so there's a resource specifically for parents. Um, mm -hmm. it sort of gives advice and tips for parents on how to communicate to kids about COVID. So there's specific examples about how to respond to types of questions. Um, then there's a specific tool for younger kids about ages five to eight. So that's the coloring book. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have an activity book for like tweens ages about 10 to 13. And we just released last week um, a resource for adolescents. So it's not quite in book format. Um, it's on the internet though, um, on our website. So there's the parent portion and then the portion for the kids. I think I downloaded the the one that's in the middle f for like the tween yeah. age. You've got the tweens one. The tweens mm -hmm. one, yeah. And and that's it really is. I, mm -hmm. I have been I've been struggling to come up with a way to explain to my kids what COVID nineteen is. They're very intelligent, um, but there's there's emotional delay, and so. They want they, they tend to want to know more about something than they're emotionally prepared to deal with, and, and so it's this very delicate balance, um, and you know trying to approach this in a way that that is realistic without instilling fear um, has been challenging because my oldest is is terrified. He has uh, he's immunocompromised, and so he understands enough to know that if he gets sick, that it's it's not a good thing. Um, and and having him look over this this kit, uh, it, it just it just presents it in a way much better than what I have been able to hobble together on my own, uh, especially you know, with all of the information that's out there, the misinformation that's out there, and um, and I wanted to I wanted to ask you when, what are you guys seeing? Like, how are kids reacting to this? Um, are you seeing? Do they really understand what's going on? Are they are they um, are they experiencing undue you know stress related to this? Are they are they are they afraid of getting sick? Do they really not understand kind of what's going on? Um, I think there's a big big variability, and I think that depends on developmental level. Um, so I think you I think you hit the nail on the head with your comment just a few minutes ago about. Um, how to present this in a way that kids can understand it, but it not being too overwhelming to where it creates more anxiety. And so I think, um, I think that's, what's great about these, these books is that they are a guide for parents to start those conversations and to provide some of those basic facts about COVID. So, you know, what is COVID? What are the symptoms of COVID? Um, there's some strategies and tips in there on how to cope with COVID. Um, but it's not too overwhelming and they're done in a developmentally appropriate way. And they're even done in a fun way. So coloring books and activity books, these are, these are normal everyday activities for kids. And so it allows for a potentially scary and threatening topic to be talked about in a really like fun and playful way. Um, yeah, there's word and, searches you know, and crossword puzzles and coloring yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. So there's coloring, the younger books, coloring, um, Kind of the mid one you're talking about the tweens one has a word search it's got a crossword puzzle it also has some coloring it's got some matching in there um the teen one um the teen one doesn't have so much activities but it's got more advice on things they can do to handle social social um, distancing and physical distancing and so those activities you know these are familiar activities for kids and they can be fun too and so it, it allows for a scary topic to be talked about in a very normal way and it really normalizes it for kids and so i think when it comes to talking about hard conversations and hard topics i think the natural inclination for a lot of parents is to protect their child shield their child not have those conversations maybe even avoid those conversations altogether and, and we'll sometimes see that in our oncology setting where you get this devastating news of childhood cancer and sometimes the initial reaction is I, i'm not going to tell my child they have this disease, um, but we actually encourage open and honest discussions, but doing it in a way that's not going to be too overwhelming for them. So providing those basic facts, but it not being too intense and too overwhelming. Um, and 
and just like you were saying a few minutes ago, kids, um, Kids, kids respond differently um, depending on their emotional level, their cognitive level, where their language skills are. And some kids really want a lot of information. So they're asking a lot of questions. We call them information seekers. Um, they go Google their own information and look it up. They, they'll be the one to ask their doctors questions. Um, and that's how they cope best. They like to know those facts and they like to know as much as possible. Other kids, however, they might avoid those conversations and they shy away from those conversations. And so I think parents know their kids best of where, where they fall on that continuum of whether they are the information seekers or if they want less information. So, so I think these, these books are a good, a good starting point for parents where they're not too overwhelming and parents can kind of you know, touch the surface and get into the basics where it's not too overwhelming or if they want to dive into more information, that's also possible. I know when I, I looked through this with my, uh, my youngest last night. And one of the first things that I noticed, and I know it's just really simple, but for me, it was impactful because my, my, uh, my teenager likes to debate me on facts and whatever. And, you know, when, when this whole COVID-19 thing came out, we, we switched from, we'd relied on hand sanitizer way too much. And I wanted to move to getting into the, the, the habit of washing our hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. Um, and, and like on the second page, I think, or, or the third page, whatever, whatever, right into the beginning of this, this path, uh, uh, this information, it has, it has an explanation for why washing your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water is the best thing that you can do. And, <laughs> and I really enjoyed, uh, showing them that <laughs> because, because it really is, it's, it's a very simple way that you can, you can help to protect yourself and the people that you're around. And, and I feel like it's sort of empowering. It, it kind of gives them a little bit of control in, 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 in a situation where maybe, I mean, like, I don't really have a whole lot of control and I know that's scary for me and, and they have even less control, but if they know that they can sort of protect themselves, they can do their part by washing their hands. It, it sort of, it, it sort of puts it in a context for them. And I'm, I'm really excited to see that. I was, it was a really simple thing, but it really was, it was really, it stuck out to me as something that impacted my family uh, directly. So I do appreciate that. That's good. That's good. That's good to hear. So what went in to, to putting this, this information together? Yeah. So it started back in early February, I'm sorry, early March. Um, and I think that's when we were starting to see some of the the changes here in Memphis. And that's when a few of us got together and thought we need to create some resources. So it was really a collaboration with um, some of us in psychology with our child life department. Um, so we have several child life specialists here who do a lot of really great work. Um, they overlap somewhat with some of our work and really helping kids cope with illness and with treatments um, and helping them understand diseases. Um, so, uh, we wrote the content for the books, um, me and two of the child life specialists, um, Samantha Tui and Rachel Schmelzer. And um, we then collaborated, we have a medical outreach team here and they help out with um, creating this really amazing online website that we have for educational material on pediatric cancer. Um, so they helped us with some of the content. And then we have, um, a graphic artist here who worked with us and she is the one who came up with those images and she did a remarkable job making it um, fun and engaging and um, just visually appealing. So the, the visuals in it, um, I think are really great for helping kids understand because the, those, those medical diagnoses and things like viruses are kind of abstract ideas for kids and it, the visuals that she created really help make it kind of concrete for them and more easy for them to understand. So this is actually the first, um, well, like I said, before we started recording, I've been on lockdown with my kids for 54 days at the time of, oh no, I'm sorry. 50. I, I just told you I had that, that app or that <laughs> widget thing. And I, I still can't remember how many it's been a while. <laughs> and, uh, I have not come across uh, a resource like this specifically. Uh, and I, and I was looking to try and, and, and help my kids because all of my kids are in different places, 
my oldest is 20. Cognitively, he's about five or six. So he would, he would probably need the younger version. Uh, and so it was, it was hard to find, believe it or not, it's hard to find information that would be developmentally appropriate for my kids being in the places that they are. And, uh, when I, when I got the email from you guys about this, I, it was, it was, it was exciting to see somebody putting something like this out there in, in a way that is very kid friendly and, and takes a lot of pressure off of me as a parent to try and come up with the ways to, to explain to them what's going on. Um, do you guys have, how do you recommend parents, um, use these resource kits with, with their kids? Do they, should they go through it with them? Should they just sort of hand it over and let the kids kind of go through it on their own or? Um, no, that's a very good question. I think that might, um, that might depend on the parent and the child and their level of comfort. I know some kids, um, some of the older kids want to be a little more independent, sort of like doing their own work on homework on their own. Um, but then maybe still having the parent nearby to help out if needed. Uh, I have gotten some feedback from some parents of younger children that they'll actually do it with them. Um, so I think that's okay too. I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong answer, um, but I think it is a good tool to, to do together if you can, as long as it's not too overwhelming for the child. You just don't want to be hovering, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, but it's an opportunity to clarify misconceptions. So like you were saying with your son about the hand washing and debating you, I think it's a good opportunity for parents to gauge their child's understanding as you're going through the book, gauge their feelings related to COVID. So whether it's anxiety or sadness or anger, clarify misconceptions that they might have. Do you find, okay, well, let me ask you this. We, we had talked about, um, you talked about sort of open, honest communication with your kids at, a, at a, an appropriate level uh, with whether you're dealing with cancer diagnosis or anything like that. When it comes to something like COVID-19, the world as at, at large was not prepared to deal with um, the impact of this and being shut away and, and isolated and whatever, you know, how, how honest, how honest should parents be? You, you know what I mean? Like, because there's a lot of, th- you can't escape the information. I mean, you'll see a death count on TV all the time. You see, uh, you know, apps, uh, pop up ads about the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, if they're playing one of their games on their phone, the app will, will pop up an ad or something. YouTube, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. How how can we help our kids to focus more on reliable, factual based information? Because I, I think, like with my with my oldest, you know, he's afraid if he goes outside, he's going to get sick. He doesn't understand how it works, and I've been trying to help him understand that you know you're not going to get sick just from going outside. You have to come into contact with somebody who has the virus. You can't just get it from someone who's not sick um, or, or not infected. And, and, and it's hard, it's hard to sort of get them to kind of connect the dots sometimes. And I don't, I don't always know how, how much detail to go into because sometimes it's too much and sometimes it's not enough. And I guess I was just wondering kind of what's your, what's your gauge on, on how to approach this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I think you're absolutely right. The level, knowing how much to give, I think, or how much information to provide. In general, when it comes to the media, we often recommend um, to limit that with kids, which is hard to do because most of them are on social media. This is how they're keeping in touch with their friends. Everything's gone virtual. So Mm -hmm. monitoring that is very, very challenging. Um, But if there are ways to minimize the exposure to at least media. And I think for the adults too, I think for us, it's, it's information overload when we get all of that. And yeah. it's, it's stressful on everybody to hear the repeated news stories because it's all very sad news too. None of it's good. Every once in a while you'll hear a positive story in the news. Um, but it is very, very scary times. This is abnormal times. This is um, something we never thought we would have to go through in our lifetime. Um, so if there's a way to minimize the media exposure to monitor the media exposure. Um, I think that's um, one great part about these books and these resources is it it provides a level that is appropriate for that developmental level. So the language in those books is sort of the basics of where their language level is. So for example, the younger book 
Um, it doesn't go into a lot of detail. It sort of just gets at the basics of COVID's a virus, um, you need to wash your hands, those types of things. The older resource gets into more detail, like what is a pandemic and more details about the virus itself. Um, so that it's, it's presented in a way it's not too overwhelming, but it, it's just enough to kind of help them understand what's going on. Um, but I think it's a real challenge because they're hearing so much information. And I think what's great about these books and resources, it, it consolidates that information to sort of the level that's it's needed. Um, and, it, and it does, it avoids some of the really, I guess, like death counts and things like that. It just gives you, if, if, like if my oldest understood how the virus actually works in, in that he can't get it just from going outside and playing in the yard or walking, you know, going to the park and not being exposed to anybody, I think his anxiety would be a lot less than what it is right now. And, and I sort of look at this as kind of a framework for parents to sort of build off of. It gives you kind of a, um, like a, like a wireframe of, of, of how to approach this with that age group. And then you got to kind of cater it to your kid's unique, uh, developmental needs or, or abilities. So, um, yes, absolutely. And we also have in the, the tween version and the teen version, we have myth busting sections. So some of the facts we have in there are sort of based on some of the misconceptions that are happening in the media right now. Um, and, and the information really is grounded in sort of the facts and the evidence and a lot of the recommendations from the CDC. So just like you said, it's sort of a, a great starting point for parents to, to talk about these things in a kind of factual way based on the developmental level. How, uh, what has the response been from parents? Have you gotten a lot of feedback? Yeah, it's been very, very positive. I think um, these are such difficult conversations and such a difficult concept for kids to grasp, especially with the sudden changes that we're all experiencing. And I think parents were very eager for some tools to guide them. Um, and uh, I think some parents might be seeing a lot of emotions that maybe they weren't seeing before, or just, I mean, like you said, we're, you've been on lockdown now 52 days. This is an abnormal situation that none of us have had to go through before. And so it's a, where do we turn? And so I think we really wanted to create those resources to help parents navigate this, this sort of unexpected time. So it's been very, very positive, very positive. Do you, do you foresee there being long-term implications for our kids um, after experiencing something like this? I mean, do you, do you like you expect they're just going to bounce back or, is it gonna is it gonna take some work that we could maybe start now? That's a very good question. I think um, it's hard to answer because it's so unknown because I think we've never we've never lived through a pandemic pandemic in our, our lifetime. Um, but I'm definitely um, a big believer that kids are resilient. I think working in an oncology setting, I get to see that firsthand and witness that every day. And when you are sort of given these tough cards in life, like a cancer diagnosis or dealing with a pandemic, um, kids are resilient. I think people in general, but especially kids, and they do find ways to cope with this and adjust and get through this. Um, that being said, it is not easy. Um, and I think we do need to be very mindful that there might be some long-term implications of this. Um, it might very well depend though on risk factors or location. Um, some areas are getting impacted more than others. Um, almost like that whole idea and trauma level of exposure and degree of exposure. Um, so if you have a more firsthand account of it, it might be a much more longer term struggle than if you don't. Um, so I think it's, I think the verdict's out. I'm not sure we'll really know, but I do have full faith and hope that um, kids are quite resilient and they'll adjust and adapt to this. Where can, where can people find this, uh, resource kit? So we have it available um, on our Together website. It's um, www.together.stjude.org. Um, so that is where the resources are for the parents and then the coloring book and the tween book. And then the teen resources are on the stjude.org website. Okay. And I'll have all those links in the descriptions so nobody has to actually remember that. Uh, everybody's heads are all over the place right now. Um, 
Is there anything else that you would like to just say to the families out there who are going through this and struggling and maybe don't know how, how to keep sane or, <laughs> you know, any, anything <laughs> helpful? <laughs> Yes, I know. This is hard times, hard times. Um, I think it's important to remember to have some some of your own self-compassion and to not beat yourself up. I think especially the parents, this is a really tough time. Well, it's a tough time for everybody, but parents are juggling their rap lot right now. So I think it's okay to forgive yourself if the conversations don't go quite as well as you wanted, or if there's another argument in the house, or um, you've got cabin fever and you're all going a little bit bonkers. Um, so I think it's it's so be easy on yourself right now. Um, I will say this though too, which we haven't quite talked about, is I think keeping routine is essential right now as much as you can. I think kids thrive on routine. We recommend it all the time in our oncology setting, and also now during COVID. And routine has been completely, you know, flipped upside down um, with all of the changes that we've had. So. In any ways you can to keep routine, you know, try to do schoolwork. It might not be the same level and extent, but try to keep socializing with friends, even though it's going to be different and virtually try to keep a normal bedtime sleep cycle, all those kinds of things. Try to exercise when you can. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously a lot of restrictions and limitations, but kids do really well with routine. Is it weird that they do well with it, but they hate it at the same time? I, because that's what I'm running into. I keep telling my kid, I set them all down the other day and I'm like, guys, we have to get into a routine. Like, yeah. you know, he's like, no, we don't need this. You know, we just like to make our own. I'm like, guys, like you may hate it. Like you may say that you hate it, but I know like it's easier for all of us when we have a schedule and you can predict what's going to happen next. And you know that you go to bed at 10 o'clock and you're up at, up at eight or something like that. You're not sleeping until one o'clock in the afternoon. You know that we have chores, we have uh, whether it's schoolwork or, or, or other means of, of continuing to learn while we're on lockdown. And, um, you know, like my kids haven't seen their mom in 52 days. Cause we did, we decided that visits had to stop, um, because it just wasn't a good idea to go back and forth. Yeah. So keep in touch with people. Um, yeah. but I just, I just find that funny that they, they, funny. they need it, but they hate it. I know. They see I know. it. At least my kids do. Exercise for some people or eating healthy foods. It's, it's good for you, but it's not always the choice that is the most pleasurable. <laughs> so. hmm. yeah. Well, I guess, you know, I, I really, really appreciate that you guys put this together. Um, it, it has had a very positive impact uh, cool. on my family, and I'm going to go through this with my kids again today. Um, is there... How, how can people support what you guys are doing? Is there a way to, you know, if people, I mean, I know we've seen the commercials and stuff like that, but is there, is there something that we can do to help you guys get out the message and support what you guys are doing for families? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, I think in terms of the books themselves, I think just spreading the word with friends and family and getting the word out that way. I think for St. Jude more globally, um, there's a lot of opportunities to help out with St. Jude. Um, and so they have a lot of great information on our website about um, you know, spreading the word, fundraising opportunities, um, ways to get involved. Um, so it's a very active um, community to help out. So if people do want to get involved, there is information on our website. And I'll, I'll have all that information in the notes so you guys can just uh, look below however you're listening to this and, and you can click on the link and and go do that. St. Jude is an amazing, amazing hospital. They do amazing things for, for our kids and our families. And uh, I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you again for putting this together. Um, stay safe, stay healthy. Well, thanks for having me and thanks for covering this. I am um, very impressed with your work as an advocate for, for autism. I think Thank you. You see is key for sure. So. Yeah, I was really excited to see the the resource kit. So I, I wanted to to talk to you guys. Thank you again for, for taking the time to uh, to do that. And uh, if there's anything that I can do to help, please let me know, and I'll do whatever I can to uh, to support what you guys are doing. Um, I hope everybody in your in your world stays safe and healthy, and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. Yes. All right. Thank you.
Before I close things out today, I just want to say thank you to Kristen for coming on the show and talking about how we as parents can can help our kids better understand the COVID-19 crisis. As a parent to to three autistic kids, it's a very difficult thing for me to navigate. You, you know, I don't I don't know, you know, I want my kids to understand what's going on so they can take it seriously, but I don't want them to be afraid unnecessarily. I, I don't want them to um to live in fear. I, I just, I, you know, th- there's, there's a balance that has to be struck and it is very dependent on developmental place. And, and what uh, Kristen and her team at St. Jude uh, has done is, is put together very useful kits of information that will help parents to do that. You know, it comes in different age groups, so you can, you can kind of pick whatever is appropriate for your family and, and you can sit down and it's something you can do. It's like an activity book. You can do this with your kids. They can learn what COVID-19 is. They can learn how to keep themselves safe. And, and it takes some of the fear out of it. When you understand something, a lot of times it's less scary. And, and that's really important right now. So, you know, our, our kids are dealing with a lot. There's a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. And, and these resource kits can, can, can sort of help to quell some of that and give them a better understanding in a way that is developmentally appropriate for their age. So huge, huge thank you to Kristen and St. Jude for doing this. Uh, I will have all the links for them in the show notes below and in the corresponding uh, blog post for this. So check them out. If you're able to, please consider donating to support St. Jude. Uh, what they do for families is, is just amazing. And um, if you're looking to donate or support a cause, St. Jude is, is at the top of my list. So please uh, keep that in mind. As always, you can find me and follow our story at theautismdad.com. All my social links are at the top of the page, mostly on Twitter, sort of on Facebook. If you want to hit me up, send me a message, do it from one of those two things or from the blog itself, and I will do my best to get back to you in a timely manner. I'm, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. A lot of times I just listen to parents um, who need to vent, so don't hesitate to reach out if, if you need something. So there's that. You can subscribe to this podcast on any one of your favorite podcast listening apps. Just please remember to hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. Should you desire to support this podcast, there's a link in the description where you can do just that. Please remember that we're going to be on hiatus for a couple of weeks. We'll be back sometime in June. And uh, if I don't talk to you before then, please take care of yourself. Please stay safe. And, uh, and we will get through this. So I will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Autistic kids can sometimes struggle to learn new skills such as riding a bike, reading, or simply having a conversation to a high level of proficiency and automaticity. Brainiac is a brain enhancement program that gets to the root of the problem. It builds stronger brain and body connections that elevate learning capacity within four to six months. Brainiac cross-trains motor movement, visual, auditory, and cognitive thinking connections using fun, interactive video games. Strength and connections allow kids to learn new skills and perform them automatically with more confidence and greater independence. Brainiac is for homes and schools. Visit canoe.com, that's K-I-N-U-U dot com, and be sure to use the code THEAUTISMDAT at checkout to save $500. It's a limited time offer and it will expire on May 31st.